Hey bye, Thomas here. And today we are testing out a new blade. Purchased this blade and everything just as a trial and everything, just to see what it can do. And if you look underneath here and you see it has this cover, guess what? This is a carbide tooth blade. I know there's a lot of people have been talking about carbide tip blades and everything. And now we're gonna see what is this blade all about and how does it handle. So this blade, we went ahead and got this blade for our Timber King 2220 up here that my dad has. And I'm gonna do a little comparison because initially beforehand I had a Timber King blade on there and we cut five logs. We cut three red oak logs, all about this same size right here, about 12 foot long and 20-ish inches in diameter. And then we cut two hickory logs. So that's five hardwood logs that we cut up on one Timber King blade. We're gonna see how does that compare to this blade right here. Now, I'm not gonna tell you where I got this blade from or anything like that, because I'm still in a testing mode. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be pretty interesting. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw this out here, see how it unravels, just like a normal blade. And we're gonna go ahead and take off this little protective guide right here, because since this is a carbide tip blade, you can see right here, Take a look at that. That's, if I can get the camera to stop moving. One second. All right. So, take a look at that. That is pretty interesting. The blade material here is actually, it says Germany on it, so we'll see. The teeth themselves, I'm going to take a look at this because I don't really know. It does not appear that there is any set there's no set to the teeth themselves. The set that itself is actually in the carbide tooth tip. So that's pretty impressive. The blade thickness appears to be pretty thick and everything. It, it, it feels like a good blade. But again, I've never used one of these. I don't really know what to expect. All I know is that people have run these and they say that they last for a, a lot longer. Now the price tag on these is quite a bit higher, but uh, I'm very an anxious to see how this thing cuts. You kind of see the, the teeth there. So there's no set to the actual blade itself. It's the actual way that they're they're welded on. So pretty impressive. So stay tuned. We're gonna go ahead and throw this on the mill and then see how it performs. Okay, now we have the blade on here. As you can see, again, let's see if I can show this a little better. So there is no discernible set to the actual teeth themselves. Uh, it is actually the tip itself. I'm trying to get my camera to focus. But uh, yeah, very anxious to try this out. The oak log that we have on here currently, it doesn't have really too many knots. I mean, there is one little branch section right here. But we are going to be cutting this up into four by sixes. So I'm going to see how does this blade do with the computer set works or anything. Are we still going to get the same size same size? Um, cuts and everything or am I going to have to adjust my computer to counteract the, the thickness of the blade. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this cut and going. Okay, the first test I did is I went back to the machine, cranked it up, and then I went ahead and engaged a clutch. I wanted to see how tracking was going to be on this new blade because I've never run a blade like this. So far, tracking is exactly where it should be. It tracks like a normal blade. So there's no concern there. I feel, feel good with that. Uh, the way that the blade rides, it's still riding perfectly on the back side there, and I've got the same amount of distance on the front. Also, when you run it real quick, you can leave some marks on there so I know where my guide roller is making contact. Since these little carbide teeth are higher, I want to make sure that I was clearing this edge of this bearing right here. We do have plenty of clearance there. We we'll probably have, I don't know, 3 16 or more uh, of clearance there, so I feel good there. So the blade is riding like a normal blade. Now we're gonna to start to uh, do some cutting. Okay, for our first cut here, again, I wanna see how the blade reacts in comparison to a normal one. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the log to get my nasty side up. We'll cut that knot off first. Really what I'm really checking on this is we've already cut up some four by sixes using a standard Timber King blade. Now running this blade, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the same thing. We're gonna cut four by sixes. Then we're gonna look at do they both cut the same? Are we getting the same uh, kerf cut? Is it very thin kerf cut, just like we're running on those Timber King Ultramaxes? Or is there some kind of slight different difference there that we'll have to uh, account for in our computer set work? 
So let me get this log turned. We'll go ahead and get the water running and we'll make our first cut and then we'll do a little examination and see how that cut looks. Now where would you put that knot? On top? Yes, always put your, your worst side off first. That's, that's a good practice I've had. It works really well for me. We've got the water running, we've got the nasty side up. We're going to go and bring the machine up towards the log. This will be a first cut using a carbide tip blade. Make sure I have a deep enough cut. Our width of cut on this one is going to be greater than 12 inches and will extend down the length of the log for the most part at 12 inches, maybe getting a little bit wider at the end. So it's a decently wide cut. And we'll go from there. So, clutch on. It tracks very well. We've already noticed that. Throttle up. There we go. Now I'm going slow with my first cut because it's new to me. I want to see what Sawdust being thrown off looks good. Usually looking at the blade looks pretty good. Really anxious to see what that cut quality looks like. Again, we're probably cutting about 14 inches wide as we get towards the base of this log, maybe even a little bit more. Sawdust is throwing out beautifully. Nice, solid stream of sawdust. Engine RPM seems to be about the same. Clutch off, we'll bring the saw head back. And we'll go examine what that uh, cut quality looks like. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the mill so you can hear me talk. All right, so now we're going to go up here, take a look at this cut quality, and we go ahead and turn off the water. Well, my dad's getting off this slab right here. We're also going to look at the, the blade. Oh, he just got hit by a wasp on your shoulder. Hold on. <laughs> stung my hand. He's, yeah, silly wasp. <laughs> he literally just got stung on the hand by that wasp. <laughs> so while he gets this off, we're going to go ahead and look at... I'll go around the other side. <laughs> the actual cut quality itself, and but we're going to look at the uh, the blade and see what it looks like. See if there's any kind of buildup or anything like that, or if it looks like a standard blade. So there you go. Uh, everything looks right. You can see in the normal oxidation that you get when you get in, uh, into oaks and wood and volcanic acid. The actual tips of teeth don't feel as sharp as a regular blade. Now let's see, old nail test. Yes, it will remove nail material. Uh, unfortunately, I won't focus on my hand right now. But yes, it, it is sharp. It just doesn't feel as sharp as a normal blade. It, it's it's just different, I'll, I'll say that. Because on the other one, you, you have like the entire gullet essentially is, is all cut out and everything. But this one, you will not actually, excuse me, I keep on missing the camera shot there. It, you will not actually have to sharpen these like a normal one. I think you can get a, a jig where you can just kind of cut the face of these teeth. Now we're going to look at cut quality. What's your take on it so far? I think it looks good. Yep, it looks about the same of a normal blade. I don't see any teeth marks that are raised up. You can kind of see on there too. It, it looks good. Cut quality seems good. Uh, now what we're going to do is as I turn this log and everything, Yesterday, when I was cutting with one of the blades, I started speeding up my uh, cut speed, if you will, and we saw 68% of engine usage. I'm going to go ahead and cut about that same speed 
and see how it uh, how it performs. See if it actually causes any uh, slowing down of the blade or anything like that, or if I can speed up through it faster. All right, so now we've got the camera set up where we want to. I'm gonna have my dad place his hand in front of the camera so you can see this. That dang wasp, back it up a little bit. That wasp got him right there in the palm of the hand. That sucks. And you can actually see the little white ring around it and everything. So yeah, wasps, red wasps suck. <laughs> All right, so now we've got the water running, we've got the sawmill cranked up. We're gonna turn the log, make this next cut, and I'm gonna speed up my cut. The width of cut will probably be in the 16 inch range. So that'll be a pretty good uh, guide there to show you how fast I'm cutting and, and what kind of cut quality we get. about 64 percent i'm going to try a little bit faster on this next cut and again I'm, I'm looking at cut quality and engine performance it seems to be cutting with no problem whatsoever and it's smooth as glass i mean smooth as glass
All right, so that last cut there, that was at just over 16 inches wide, and I had the engine usage up to 70%. That was actually a pretty quick clip, I'll say that, for that wide and everything. There's no way I could have cut that on my other mill that fast, because this is very heavy oak. And that was a deep cut, too. Again, we're trying to see what we can do. I don't want to break the blade, but I, I am pushing the blade. Cut quality is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, put the camera up here to show you this, because I was, I was pushing it a little bit. Again, 70% usage on a 50 horsepower diesel engine and cut quality like this. And what my dad noticed also, it is throwing, I mean, literally, yes, you can see a little bit of raised edge there, but I mean, not much. I mean, this, this right here, that's smooth, folks. That's really, really smooth. But my dad did notice while we were cutting that, it was throwing sawdust out further than the other blade. So we're throwing out further, and it was a solid stream. We're gonna go ahead and look at the blade over here as well and see how the sawdust builds up in there. Uh, so far, I am pretty impressed. Really, the, the next test is gonna be longevity. How long will this blade continue to cut like this? And yes, I can obviously tell you right now, there is definitely not as much sawdust build up in here. The blade still feels as sharp as it was whenever I started. That is pretty impressive, folks. I mean, yes, there's no logs or anything. I guess a good, another good test would be a really, really knotty pine. But the cut quality on this is pretty phenomenal. I mean, it's... I'm going to be buying some more of these blades for sure, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so... Now we just have to see longevity, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna baby it. We're gonna go ahead and push this blade a little bit harder than I like to push things, because I, I'm not gonna lie, I usually do cut a little bit slow, uh, <laughs> but uh, so far I'm liking this. Also, so I say longevity's not, not next. Actually, what's next is we're gonna go ahead and cut all these four by sixes. So this direction right here, of course, I have it on the four inch scale, and up and down here I have on the six inch scale. What I'm gonna do. Is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to throw it on a hyperlapse. I'm going to go ahead and cut this log in half here. We'll flip the entirety of the logs up and everything, and then start cutting down at our four inch increments. And we're going to measure and compare these, how they cut, make sure they measure up the same to how we cut with the uh, Timber King ones uh, just yesterday. We have oak, red oak logs that were cut on both, and they were both actually the same size. Each one of them uh, will yield six pieces so this is a really good comparison we're trying to be as scientific as possible make sure we keep everything the same but thus far i'm pretty impressed folks this this is uh this is pretty neat so stay tuned all right so that took like five minutes to cut this. It was really, really quick. Uh, I was I was pushing a little bit and everything, not too bad. All right, tail of the tape. So I'm gonna grab this one right here. That is spot on at four inches. So I feel good there. And then now we can look across the top here. Boom. Spot on at six inches as well. And I'm pretty sure I can take that measurement anywhere along here. Yep. That's four inches as well. So yes, the I didn't have to do any kind of adjustments to the computer. Uh, the blade was cutting just like a normal Timur King Ultramax. Still feels sharp as when I first put it on there. It doesn't actually feel that sharp, but obviously it is cutting like it's extremely sharp. I have not touched the sawdust. I just opened it up here. It is actually doing a really good job because you can see, I mean, it's just really just utilizing this first and a little bit on the second. But it is throwing out that sawdust, and I hope you can see that on the hyperlapse and everything. It is throwing out the sawdust in a smooth manner and everything, and it uh, it's doing pretty well. I am very impressed thus far. So now, longevity. That's what we're up to next. So we're gonna get. In, I'm gonna throw on some time lapse and everything, and we're gonna cut through a number of logs. Our next log up will probably be this gnarly hickory log right here, and then we'll probably cut. Probably not that red oak log. We'll probably cut. 
Uh, I got some red oaks over there that are about the same size as what we cut the other day, and we'll have to get another hickory log. But yeah, we're gonna cut five logs on this blade, just like we did the last blade, and we'll see how it compares. So, so far, I'm pretty impressed, we're, but we gotta see, is it worth it? Because these blades are quite a bit more expensive than your typical uh, Ultramax blade or, or whatever blade you go to, Cooks or the Ripper 37s, whatever that may be. These blades are more expensive, and it's really gonna come down to Okay, does the cut quality stay good throughout the entire life of the blade? And how long does that blade cut? How many board foot can I cut? So we're going to keep track of the number of board footage cut up on this blade, and we'll see what we've got. And I'll, I'll do a calculation to figure out the board footage of the other one, and we'll go from there. Stay tuned. Okay, so that was our second log on this blade here, and they both yielded quite a few. I think we got uh, two, four, so eight. Eight four by sixes out of the first two logs. First log being red oak, second log being hickory. Now, we did not clear out the exhaust. Nope, my dad did, I'm sorry. But uh, there wasn't much in there. There was actually less than what we were seeing with the other one. The blade still feels just the same sharpness. And it's cutting like a dream. I'm keeping my engine, I guess my torque power there, or torque uh, loading percentage of everything, about 65 to 70%. That seems to be working. I do like that ability to see on this mill. It actually gives you like your, your engine loading. It's really nice. Next, I believe we'll be cutting up some more of these uh, red oak logs here and everything. Now, these logs are actually a little bit bigger than what I was cutting with on the Timber King blade. Uh, I did some calculations over there. I cut up 500, roughly about 500 board foot on the uh, Timber King blade. And this one thus far, I don't know, we're probably just over 300 or so board foot. I'll, I'll have to do some numbers. But so 500 board foot is roughly what we got out of, what we got out of the first blade before it starts to show signs of uh, dulling and, and slowing down. This one right here has not yet shown that. So we're going to keep on keeping on and we will go until it feels to be about what the uh the timber king blade was cutting so i think this is gonna be interesting this is as close to a scientific uh uh i guess experiment as we can show to show how does a carbide tip blade compare to a normal uh, say timber king ultramax or, or something of that same nature but yeah we have quite a few logs here so that last log we cut was a hickory and it was actually quite large it was it was i'm not gonna lie we were cutting some of those pieces were over 16 inches wide and I left a lot of weight on there and man, they look beautiful. That's, that's gonna be some beautiful stuff. So dad's gonna go ahead and load up this red oak here and then we'll continue on and then we'll probably throw on some white oak on there because I'm actually running low on hickory logs right now. I don't think I see another hickory log, but anyways, we're gonna cut nothing but hard stuff and we'll see what the final board footage will be. So stay tuned. Okay, so again, on the first blade, we ran about 500-ish board foot, just slightly over. This right here, we were at uh, 568 board foot so far, and you can see the cut quality is still just as good as when we started. And so again, we're 68 board foot over what we last ran, feeling the blade itself. Sharpness is still about what we where we were at when we started. 
So I'm pretty impressed. So what, 568 thus far, and I still think we have plenty more logs to cut. We're gonna go ahead and take a little break here, go grab some lunch or anything, and then uh, see what we get up with. So the goal is, um, I think we will be able to get a thousand board foot or more out of this blade. So we'll see, so I'm at 568 right now. She's still cutting great, still throwing sawdust just phenomenally well, and it's not clogging up the exhaust. I mean, it's just shooting that sawdust out there. So wish us luck. The goal of at least a thousand board foot out of one blade, we'll see. So as I wait for my dad to load on the next log and we continue cutting on with this uh, carbide blade, I just want to show you the cut quality of what this looks like. Now this is over 16 inches wide on hickory, and hickory is really hard wood. I mean, look at that cut quality. That's I can put my finger back and forth, and I'm not really even catching any of those ridges. That is a phenomenal, phenomenal cut quality. Look at that. There's like no anything. I mean, that, that's that's as smooth of a cut I've ever seen before on a piece of wood. I'm very impressed with that. I think a blade like this would be perfect if you're cutting a lot of hickory or if you're cutting a lot of oak or something like that and you don't want to do a lot of finishing afterwards. I mean, folks, this is, this is beautiful. I mean, beautiful. Plus, this log was absolutely gorgeous. I mean, that's 16 inches wide of hickory, but you can see the cut quality. So we got a few more we're gonna cut. Um, I think, running some numbers or anything, I think we're gonna get greater than 1,500, maybe close to 2,000 board foot out of one blade. That's my goal. So stay tuned, we'll see what we can get. I'm gonna do a lot of time lapse here because we're gonna do a lot of cutting. Here we go. Folks, that last log was <laughs> kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, and I was trying to tell my dad on this too. We had the log too far back and the turner in this location anyways, as I lift up the log here and it wasn't on this bunk, it was catching kind of right here. Um, so that's just a thing that we're gonna get used to in this mill and everything. On my mill, my tow boards tuck in a little bit closer. They're more like right here. So this right here, you gotta make sure that you'd have the end of the log either right here close by the tow board or you have it completely on the bunk. So I did have a little bit of issue there. Also, you saw me on the saw head here. We did have a small hydraulic leak. Those fittings right up there, you can see in the center of the screen. Uh, that's not uncommon. This is a brand new mill. We're in a break-in period and that is totally common. Uh, so you always wanna run the mill, light and everything, and then you're just checking for any kind of hydraulic leaks. That was the first one that I found and you know, that's not, uncommon i mean this is a, a piece of equipment everything and with a whole lot of hydraulic lines so it's bound to happen uh, other than that uh, it's been cutting great i will run the numbers here in a second but we're about to throw another log on here uh still cutting great um we did run out of water too had to get more water and had a weird piece of bark clog up the exhaust but really no issues with the exhaust on this i actually like how this thing is throwing sawdust I, it's, it's been doing very well so Again, we'll continue some more time lapses. However, my battery is being eat up. 
so I might have to do some type of uh, uh, shortening of the video so I don't eat up all my battery in one day. All right, stay tuned, here we go. Okay, I just ran some numbers. I'm up to 761, I think, board feet. And then I'll, I'm gonna recut these two pieces right here. This will give me a couple more of these four by sixes that we need, and I have another oak log sitting down right here. It'll give me some more. So the blade's still doing well. Uh, everything's still tracking true. So hopefully we don't have any more issues on this one like we did in the last cut. I'm currently charging my phone off of my truck and filming, so hopefully my battery won't die on this. Wish me luck, here we go. All right, folks, so this gets me up to 1,001 board foot. And actually, I'm undercutting my numbers, so more likely I'm probably in the 1,100 to 1,200 board foot so far cut on this carbide blade. It is cutting still very great. Uh, it's cutting very true still. I've been going through some knots and everything, making some deep cuts, still maintaining about 70% on the torque percentage on the engine and everything. And it's literally cutting like a dream. So we're going to keep on cutting uh, until I feel like the blade is too dull. So stay tuned. Here we go. All right, folks. I've got to show you something that's absolutely quite amazing. We're loading up all these 4 by 6s onto the trailer. And something caught my eye on the hickory log. Now notice the hickory log was our second log we cut. We had a nail strike. See that right there? We hit a nail on our second log, and I didn't even realize it. We hit a large nail on our second cut, or our second log. That was like 800 board feet ago. <laughs> and yeah, that's, oh, I'll tell you what. We hit another nail there. That's two, at least two nail strikes I didn't even know about. Uh, so two nail strikes, you see no change in blade quality, and that was, shoot, that's three, because I hit the nail on that side and on that side. So heck, I don't know how many nail strikes I've had in that hickory. Uh, no issue, and I'm still cutting. I'm just over 1,000 board foot as we continue to load this stuff on here, and I'm still gonna keep on cutting with this blade. It is cutting true as can be. That's amazing, y'all. That is absolutely amazing. Folks, as we continue cutting with this carbide tip tooth blade, we had to stop yesterday. We had some storms or anything roll in. I am now up to 1,400 board foot cut up. Now, this is ash that we cut. I just wanted to show you, again, the cut quality of this. It's hard to get a good feel for how good this is, but it's really good. It is still cutting just as smooth as glass after having at least 1,400 board foot, because I'm not even counting some of the off cuts we have, I'm just gonna put 1,400 board foot on this carbide tip tooth plate and it's running strong still. We're gonna see what else we can cut. I think the next log, which is really gonna give it a run for his money, is we're gonna cut this log right here. This log right here is a giant red oak log. And it's about 12 or 13 foot long. And we'll cut that one up on this blade still. We're, we're trying to see how far can we take this blade before we deem it not usable anymore and we have to uh, sharpen it. So stay tuned. All right, folks, so this is what I do early in the morning on vacation when the kids and everything are asleep. We're actually down in Destin, uh, out here at the beach and everything, having a fantastic time. But uh, this video is going quite long, so I'm 30 something minutes into the video. I'm not gonna continue this video on for right now. I'll make this into a, probably a three part series. Um, the first one as you just saw shows the first couple cuttings of logs and everything. The second one, 
you'll be amazed at the next log we put on the mill. It's absolutely gorgeous and the cut quality remains beautiful. And then we'll show the sharpening of the blade, how that blade sharpens up with Mr. Robert down in Mississippi. And the third part will be showing the actual cutting of the blade after it's been sharpened. So please stay tuned. Uh, looking forward to this video getting out there. I think a lot of people will be pretty impressed. I will be buying some carbide tip tooth blades. That spoiler is out there. Um, but there will be a certain use that I'll use these blades for. So stay tuned. We'll see you around.